Hello everybody, I'm going to show you how to make an airfoil uh, wing today. Uh, we're going to use Pro Engineer, and we're going to get our data for the airfoil from an online website. Uh, so if you just Google airfoil coordinates, click on the first link, you come up to this database, and there's a huge amount of airfoils in here. Uh, so I'm just going to skip on down to the end section, and I'm going to look at a NACA file. Uh, NACA airfoils, they're very uh, common, um, used on all sorts of planes. Uh, so I'm going to use a NACA 012, 64012 here. Uh, so this is split up into two sections, an upper curve and a lower curve. So if you look over here, we have an X column and then a Y column next to it. And over here, the Y column is all positive. This is our upper curve. Y column over here is negative, it's our lower curve. And one thing that you can notice here is the X coordinates only go from 0 to 1. And this is because we're going to be able to resize our airfoil later on. And 0 to 1 makes it very easy to resize it. We can multiply it by 100 to get a 100 unit length airfoil or whatever you want to do. So next step is to go into notepad and I've already created the files here but you will you can see what it looks like when you open it up uh, so first step is you're gonna have a header for your X Y and Z coordinates because we're using Cartesian and it's very easy to do this so you're just gonna separate them with a tab and then normally you'd have a couple of spaces in front of each column. You're going to want to eliminate those spaces and you're going to look, you're going to come up with a file that looks like this all the way down. These zeros you're going to have to add yourself. Hold on a second, I'll explain that. But you're going to get like a 0000, zero, zero, zero whatever, and then another 0.000000. Zero, 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 zero. You're going to separate them with a tab, just like you separated the header up here. And that's going to symbolize to Pro Engineer that this is the new, a new column, this is the Y column. These are all our Y coordinates. And because this is a 2D section, our Z coordinate is just going to be 0. Now you're going to have to input this yourself. You're going to have to put in all the tabs and then put a column of zeros in. Fairly simple to do. Now when you go to save this, it's very important to save it as a .pts file rather than a .txt file. Now if I was just going to save it like this, this would come back with a .txt tag on the end of it. What you need to do to ensure that this is going to save as a .pts file is to put the quotation marks in. If you don't do that, Pro Engineer isn't going to read it and it's going to make your life miserable. So cancel that because I've already saved this. And I don't want to save that. We can minimize this and we're going to start Pro Engineer. I've already booted it up to save time. You're going to create a new sketch file and I'm going to name this NACA underscore 64012 after the airfoil name and we hit OK. Now I'm running Pro Engineer 5 here. This method will work on Pro Engineer 3, 4. I've used it on both of those. So once you open up the sketch file, uh, your first step is get to create a coordinate system. And then you're going to take the straight line tool and make a one unit long line coming off of the dot. Now this one unit line comes from the 0 to 1 coordinates from the PTS file and the online coordinates. Then you're going to take a spline tool and you're going to go up. And you can make 2, 3, 4, however many uh, clicks you want to make the spline curve. It doesn't matter, just as long as you start at the coordinate system and end at the end of the line. So I'm going to click on the spline and then right right click and there we go and click modify. And since we have PTS files we're going to select from file and then it asks us to select the coordinate system. So there's a coordinate system, we select it and then we can open up the files. So we're going to start with the upper curve, open, 
Now the file contains a different number of points. This refers to the fact that we only have two points up there and it's going to create more. That's fine. We're going to hit yes. And there is our upper curve of this airfoil. So we're happy with that. We're going to select that. Just say OK. And we're going to repeat the same process underneath. I only did one click there. It really doesn't matter how many you do. Modify, file, select the coordinate system. And now we're going to select our lower curve. Yes. And just a little bit of touch up work. We're going to get rid of the center line there. And there's our airfoil. So we're going to save. <laughs> Always save. And to actually go ahead and make the wing, uh, we're going to go ahead and make a new part. So this is going to be a test wing. You can name this whatever you want, it doesn't matter. So first step, we're going to go, let's just go right, and we're going to make a sketch. And we're going to accept this. So from here, we're going to go to sketch, data from file, and a file system. And here we have our sketch file that we just made, and we're going to say open. And you'll notice we have the little plus next to our mouse. That means we can click wherever we want, and it'll insert this. Now this rotation and scale, it's pretty simple. Uh, let's see, I want to go 90 degrees. It's going to flip it down 90 degrees. Uh, because the way ProEngineer reads this is degrees is positive. Going from, starting from the x-axis and going counterclockwise. So if I wanted to get rid of that, I'd go ne negative 90 degrees, I would go up, and 0 comes back to there. So just for simplicity, I'm just going to leave this as 0, and I'm going to make the scale 300. Oops. 300. Now you notice we have this little x here in the middle of the airfoil. That allows us to snap this to a, any uh, reference that we have. So I'm just going to snap it to the uh, center axis there and I'm going to accept this. Once you accept this you can't manipulate the angle but you can manipulate the scale. So I just changed the front part of this to 100 so now it's 250 length. I'll change that back and now I'm going to accept that. Now, the reason why I have a sketch here is because if I, if I need to resize the airfoil later on, that sketch makes it easy to do, especially if I'm just changing the length back and forth a little bit. Now, I'm going to make a new datum plane. Let's make this 200 off. And we're going to make another sketch there. And we're going to follow the same steps. We're going to go sketch data from file, file system, select our airfoil and hit open, and I'll go with 100, sure, that'll work, and I'll snap to the grid and accept that. So now we have our two sketches there, and if you're familiar with a blend, you're just going to put a blend through both of those. If you're not, you can follow these instructions. So we're going to go to Insert, Blend, Protrusion, and we're just going to hit Done and Done for the first two. Now we need to select our base datum plane, so I'm going to select the one that we made our bigger airfoil on, and we need to make sure that this arrow is pointing towards the second one. If it isn't, then we hit Flip. But since it was OK, we don't need to change that direction. So we're going to say OK, and just hit Default. It doesn't really matter which way you have this viewed. All right. Next we're going to use the Use tool to select our airfoil curves. So I'm going to hit Use. And you see how this arrow right here is going up and pointing a little bit to the right? You want to make sure when you go to the next airfoil that it's pointing the same direction. So now that we have this first section uh, selected, we're going to go right click, toggle section and we're going to go to the second airfoil. Now if you were going to start on the left side now, you'd notice that this arrow is in the wrong direction. So I'm going to undo that and start on the right side, and we have our arrow here pointing to the up and to the right. That's how we want it. 
And then I'm just going to close out of that and accept this. Now it's going to ask us for the length in between the two airfoil sections. So that was 200, if you remember the datum plane distance. And we're going to select OK. And now we're going to preview it. And I'm just going to hit OK to get rid of that bar. And there's our wing. Not a very big wing, but it's a wing nonetheless. So now if you wanted this on both sides, you don't have to redo it. You can just mirror it across the main datum plane. And there you go, one wing. Now you can do this with as many airfoil sections as you want. Um, you can do this with three uh, if you were going to make a, like a standard commercial wing. Uh, I'd have this second section a little bit bigger and this would just be in line approximately with the engine. So your datum plane here could be used for a revolve to make an engine or something like that. Uh, it can be pretty easy. Uh, well, let's say for example that we didn't want this back line to be angled back, we wanted it to be straight out. And we weren't too happy with this uh, with this blend. What we can do is go in and rather than redo the protrusion, uh, which is the blend, uh, we can edit the sketch and simply move this along. So we can change this dimension. This was 100 units long. So let's make this 50. And now that is at 100 back from the corner system. So it, if you remember properly, uh, if I remember properly, this was 300 units long and 150 back. So this, 100, this 50 and 100 should add up to make them correct. And now you can see how it was right there, and the back is completely perpendicular to this forward axis. So you can go ahead and edit your lengths and positions of the airfoil just going back and editing the sketch rather than remaking the whole thing. So good luck with making your planes and whatever you're going to use this for. Uh, I hope you have fun and I hope this helped you out.